Friday, March 11th, 2011, Japan started what would become one of the most tragic weeks in Japanese modern history. Following an earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0, a large tsunami 15 meters tall destroyed the east coast of Japan and took the lives of 19,500 people and disabled the power supply of three Fukushima power Daiichi reactors, causing one of the biggest nuclear reactions on Earth. All three cores melted within the first three days after the blast, and the accident was rated a number seven on the international and radiological event scale. However, over the years, just like the Chernobyl exclusion zone, wildlife in the area and around Fukushima are thriving. I'm your host Dewey Stewart and today we take a look at the top 10 weirdest animals found in Fukushima. Starting us off at our number 10 spot are horses. Mina Misoma of Fukushima City has a tradition that is centuries old known as Soma Nomao or in English, Chasing Wild Horses Festival. Sadly, after the Fukushima disaster in 2011, the city became uninhabitable and the festival had to be stopped. The festival ran for centuries and was created to honor the contribution that horses have made to humanity for all time. How sweet is that? Shout out to the ponies in the back. Rancher Shinichiro Tanaka returned to find his horses either dead or starving once he was able to return home. The Japanese government, worried about future radioactive animals, ordered Tanaka to kill the rest of his horses, but he absolutely refused. Instead, he actually nursed them back to full health, and they are now thriving in the lands near Fukushima. There was even a documentary made later based on these horses called The Horses of Fukushima. So there may not be anything crazy about these horses, but to this day in a radioactive ghost town, packs of healthy wild horses can be seen just horsing around. At number nine, we have dogs and cats. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Shout out in my next video to whoever can tell me what movie that quote is from. Anyway, back to doggies and kitties. Located in Fukushima, Japan is one amazing animal shelter called Nyander Guard. This shelter was set up after the Fukushima disaster for any animals that were left behind after the blast. An estimated 20,000 animals were left behind after the events in 2011. Early rescue efforts were organized by 52 year old Japanese businessman Akira Honda, who then called volunteers to help with his mission in saving the homeless animals. These volunteers usually had to sneak over police barricades and trespass into the radioactive area, but eventually these rescue missions missions came to a standstill when a good portion of these volunteers were detained by police. Thankfully, the Nyander Guard shelter was a government sponsored solution. Nyander Guard has its work cut out for them, but has since rescued thousands of dogs and cats. One of the most famous being a cat by the name of Kevin Costner. Fun fact, I actually met Kevin Costner at a Father's Day event in Iowa celebrating the 25th anniversary of the movie Field of Dreams a few years back, and it was pretty awesome. He signed my glove, he meowed, and then he licked his paw and he ran away. <laughs> Nice guy. Anyway, if you're looking to adopt a cat or dog, go online and check out some of Nyander Guard's cute fur babies looking for love. Who knows, maybe you'll find a Leo DiCaprio. At our number eight spot, we have nuclear cattle. Just like the horse of Fukushima, the cattle that were left behind after the blast were supposed to be euthanized by their owners too. But of course, their owners loved them too much and they refused. Instead, farmers kept returning to their animals to feed and care for them using money out of their own pocket. The cows were no longer permitted to be sold due to contamination, so now there are just these nuclear radioactive cattle wandering around Fukushima. Oh, and they're movie stars just like the horses and Kevin Costner. There's also a documentary made about these cows called Nuclear Cattle. Go give it a watch and see if you can see any of their radioactive glows. Mm, just kidding. Coming in at our number seven spot is traveling contaminated salmon. After the 2011 disaster in Fukushima, people all over the world were worried about the contaminated water that would seep into the Pacific Ocean. This fear wasn't completely unfounded either. In 2016, salmon containing cesium-134 particles, a radioactive substance popularly known as the fingerprint of Fukushima, was found off the coast of Oregon in the United States, about 6,000 miles away. The exact same particles were also found in the Tillamook Bay and Gold Beach, Oregon as well. While this sounds alarming at first, it isn't actually all that bad. Ken Buesler, a senior scientist at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, says that the levels found in the salmon and water isn't a cause for alarm. In one interview, Buesler says, to put it in context, if you were to swim every day for six hours a day in those waters for a year, that additional radiation from the addressed cesium from Japan is 1,000 times smaller than one dental x-ray. So even though these fish aren't that toxic, I still don't recommend eating them nor swimming in the area of Fukushima. There are still radioactive materials being dumped in the waters there, and thanks to the ocean currents, the radioactive materials don't heavily impact the wildlife because it's spread out. But also, how about we don't dump radioactive materials in our oceans? Hmm, just a thought. At number six, we have mutated butterflies. 
The butterflies found in Fukushima have proven to be quite sensitive to the radiation they have experienced over the years. Butterflies found in Fukushima that have been known to feed on radiation drenched leaves experienced abnormalities such as short forewings and differing survival rates compared to normal butterflies. These effects were found to be in many different butterflies in a range of different levels of contamination. Some even in levels originally thought to not be harmful at all. But no worries, studies show that these butterflies will continue to thrive and will actually help them evolve to withstand areas with low levels of radiation much much better. I wonder if these butterflies have started changing into cooler colors or once they hatch from the cocoon they just become larger caterpillars with giant wings. Oh yeah, see you in Japan. Coming in at our halfway point at number 5 are the Japanese macaques aka snow monkeys. All over the area of Fukushima you will find tons of Japanese macaques. These monkeys are known to be quite aggressive and I don't recommend getting close to them if you see one. That being said, I'm not surprised that a radioactive monkey is still a little aggressive. Maybe it's because these monkeys actually have fewer red and white blood cells which makes them more susceptible to serious infections. The strange thing though, scientists have yet to prove the reason for these strange abnormalities in the Fukushima monkeys. Most people believe it is due to the Fukushima disaster but nothing is proven yet. Personally, I think it would make sense but hey, I'm not a scientist, I'm just a dude with a theater degree. So what does this guy know other than Shakespeare and how to properly project on stage? At number 4 we have wild boars. Once people left Fukushima after the terrible radioactive incident, the wild boars decided to come down from the mountains and take over. And I mean, take over. Over. In coastal towns such as Naimi and Tomioka, wild boars can be found strutting down the streets foraging for food and even attacking humans who attempt to return to their homes. The mayor of the town even went on record saying it is not really clear now which is the master of the town, people or the wild boars. In March of 2017 the evacuation order was lifted and residents returned to their homes or at least tried. Since then many of them have set up traps and have started hunting these wild boars in an attempt to take back their hometown. However, these wild boars are still going Going strong and refuse to leave. Imagine having a standoff with a gang of wild boars in your hometown. Honestly, it doesn't sound that different than the small farm town that I grew up in because one time at recess, a bunch of the local farmers had to come and herd an escaped aggravated bull off our school playground. Luckily, the entire school was inside when this happened, but for recess, all we did was just stare out the window. Luckily, no one was hurt and the next day we all got to go back to our playground. Maybe I should send some of our hometown farmers down to Fukushima to help with the wild boars. Don't worry Mr. Aiken, if they ask you any questions, just tell them Dewey sent you. Coming in at number 3 and starting us off at our top 3 spot, we have an earless bunny rabbit. Along with the wild boars in the small town of Naimi, there is also an earless bunny rabbit that was born on May 7th, 2011, just after the Fukushima incident. In addition to being born with no ears, this small little rabbit was also born with albinism or a lack of melanin, making the bunny white with red eyes. Red glowing demon eyes. Just kidding. Or am I? The rabbit's birth coincided with an announcement made by Tokyo Electric, stated seawater samples 150 miles north of Tokyo contained levels of radioactive strontium around 240 times the legal limit. Those levels were also found in the groundwater located in and around the area of the exclusion zone. While it was never proven the exact reason for the birth defects of the bunny rabbit, it did bring up questions of what might happen to humans in the time after the disaster. I unfortunately do not know if the earless bunny rabbit is still alive or not, but rabbits usually live up to 12 years. Mind you, that's normal non mutated rabbits. So pack your bags and go searching for the earless rabbit and also just watch out for those wild boars. At our number 2 spot we have a mutated cat. Mutated animals reached their highest rates 5 years after the Fukushima disaster. During that time period, some animals were actually born with major deformities at birth such as this cat who was born with two heads. Well. Kind of two heads. It's difficult to say if this counts as two heads or two faces on one head, but either way, you get the picture. Some even were found to have two muzzles or even extra paws. These birth defects were caused by the increased dose of radiation, but I can confidently say these animals are still safer and kinder than those wild boars from the mountains. But cats weren't the only animals with crazy birth defects, which brings us to our number one spot. Coming in at our number one spot today, we had the mutated goat. Just like the cat with the extra head slash face, there was a goat born with two extra legs. It is not known if this increased the stability or speed of the animal, but it is known that these extra limbs are caused by the increase in radiation. Many animals in the years after the Fukushima disaster acquired cancer or congenital abnormalities of the skull or limbs, such as this goat. 
At this time, I do not know what the rates of mutated animals are in Fukushima, but I will say if you plan on going to this area anytime soon, it might be a good idea to bring your own drinking water. So you know, just so you don't wake up the next morning with a couple extra limbs. There you have it. That has been our top 10 weirdest animals found in Fukushima. Once again, just like in the Chernobyl video, I was hoping for that these animals would be a little bit more weird, but the last three really did deliver. Also, shout out to Sabira Walker who dropped me an awesome icebreaker question in my last video. Sabira asked, if zombies came tomorrow, what's your safety plan? <laughs> well, I think my safety plan is to immediately travel to Beverly Hills and hide out with Bill Murray in his mansion, you know, kind of like in Zombieland. Although, unlike Woody Harrelson, I wouldn't actually kill Bill Murray because I wouldn't be able to live with myself after that. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. I've been your host Dewey Stewart and I will see you all back here very soon. All right, this one's fun. As far as pronunciations go. Known as Soma no, no, no oh Man, that was the one I forgot. Soma. Known as? Okay. Located in Fukushima, Japan. I don't know. <laughs> I put a period in there. <laughs> that was good, okay. <laughs> anyway, if you're looking for <laughs> oceanographic, what a crazy word. Oceanographic. Oceanographic? Yeah? yeah oceanographic. How easy is that, Dewey? Coming in at our halfway point at number five are the Japanese macaques, AKA, <laughs> I'm sorry man, that was so immature. <laughs> macaques or macaques, what do you say? Um, I said macaques just to say. Macaques, that's a good 